Gordon, aka Eeyore Equus from Reddit again, and uh, we're going to process, or at least do an initial process, on some data from MJC from Connecticut. Uh, data he posted in our Reddit, uh, or in our astrophotography subreddit, saying, hey, at the uh, end of integration here, this has a very bad green cast to it, and when I remove that by unlinking RGB and string transfer function, the green cast goes away, but then I've lost a bunch of color from my actual objects, and he was a little worried about that, understandably so. So I said, well, you know, this, this is something we can probably uh, address with some uh, color calibration and some background extraction, and thought we'd make a quick video just to kind of show how those tools work. So we're going to start first with the image itself. We're going to apply a quick auto stretch with the screen transfer function, and sure enough, we'll find out that we do now have a pretty nice green cast there. But that looks, to be perfectly honest, mostly like uh, light pollution, perhaps. Uh, so uh, probably really not that big of a deal. Now, as he points out, if we unlink RGB, we get some colors that make a little more sense, but we do seem to be very low saturation here. And if you look, you will see that there is definitely a, a big dome of light, a big gradient here. So we're going to try to uh, attack that, and then we'll handle the colors with perhaps a, a, a curves adjustment or something along those lines. First thing we're going to do, however, is we're going to crop this image. Note around the edge, and this is very typical when you you've stacked images, stacked frames. Around the edge here, we have this nice black frame, and we want to get rid of that. A uh, great deal of, of any software's uh, algorithms or automatic processes are going to depend on statistical analysis of the pixels in the image. And what we're doing is we're feeding it some pixels that aren't representative of the, the image we've got. We've got all these solid black or zeros pixels out here that we would like to not have included in those uh, analysis. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to crop these edges well down, several pixels inside here. I'm going to go ahead and crop that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to resize this image, mostly just to make it a little bit easier to work with here in our video. I did notice that PixInsight had to do a fair amount of swapping there, which is impressive on my 32 gig uh, RAM machine. So this is probably a very large image. So we're very quickly here going to resample this down to about, uh, let's go down to about 70% of our original size. Uh, this will help both with uh, with noise a little bit, but also just make it a little easier and faster to work with for the purposes of our video here. All right, that'll that'll help. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're just going to run an automatic background extraction real quick on this image and just see what we get. All right, we're going to leave the defaults. We're just going to run it. Here, we're going to take a look at the background that it is extracted. What uh, ABE thinks is our gradient. Let's stretch that. And sure enough, that looks about right, actually. Let's uh, let's make these the same size here. And yeah, if you take a look, that looks awfully accurate here. Now, we'll put that over there. Sure does look about right. I would say there's probably a little bit more of a gradient down here, down through this area, than we really see showing up here. So that may show up when we apply this ABE. Uh, if it does, well, we'll talk about that. All right, we're going to subtract that. Oops, there we go. We're going to do subtraction. We can discard the background model and replace the target image because we don't need those now that we've looked at them. We'll go ahead and run that. And then we'll restretch the result. And sure enough, we did have that little blob down there, but this isn't bad at all. Now, normally, if we were doing a full final process, we'd probably fire up dynamic background extraction here and actually place some sample points down through here to help get rid of this. But to be perfectly honest, since we're making a quick video here, I'm just going to cheat. And we're just going to crop that right out for now. Poof. Uh, that'll, that's just going to make life a little easier for our video here. All right. But again, like I said, normally we'd use a dynamic background extraction, place some samples down there to try to get rid of that. Okay, that looks like a fairly strong set of data. And again, we'll link and unlink RGB. And already we see that there's a significant improvement here. These these look very close to the same, so we're probably fairly well balanced. We're going to clean that up and just be sure with color calibration. Now, in the case of this image, I'm going to use the entire image itself as my white reference. Uh, in an image that had a predominant galaxy or nebula somewhere, I would probably select that with a preview and use it as the reference. But in this case, we just don't have that here. We might could use this area here, but we just don't have that. So we're just going to tell it to use the entire overall image itself as its white reference. And then for 
our background. We'll pick one of the darker areas up here. Tell it that's our background reference. And we'll let it do some color calibration here. And now we'll restretch. That's starting to look much better. Now we're starting to see some of the reds of some of the dust through here. We're starting to see a little bit of detail in the Milky Way core start popping out through here. This is definitely starting to look more like we wanted to see. Uh, we're going to also do, or at least take a look at background neutralization, although to be perfectly honest, at this point, we probably don't need it because that's awfully close. There is a little bit of green when we unlink things, though. A little bit of green. We're going to go ahead and use that same preview as our reference image. And then we're going to do a little background neutralization. You'll see there won't be much change, but now we're probably a little bit closer between the two. Yeah, still some green when we unlink. But that's okay. This looks pretty good. Now, at this point, we might do quite a bit of sharpening or deconvolution or, or any HDR, any number of things to bring more detail out or to pull out more data, give it some more life, more pop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but in this case, for a quick video, we're just going to go ahead and stretch this image and we'll just apply the STF auto stretch here. Oops, I probably should tell it to work on this image. There we go. We'll just go ahead and apply that to it so we can go ahead and make it nonlinear. And then do just a couple of other steps because now we do have what MJC was worried about. We are still lacking a little color here. It's a little bit better than it was initially after ABE, but we're still lacking a little bit color here. So let's very quickly grab a curves transformation tool and just to demonstrate that we can still make a fairly significant impact on this image after the fact, after we've stretched it. Fire up our preview here. We can get rid of STF since we're now no longer linear. We'll select the, so the uh, saturation curve of the curves transformation box. Fire up our preview. We'll grab down here fairly low near the bottom. Run this well up and we really start to see some color start popping out of the image. That's obviously in fact way too much. We'll stop about in here. And I've probably overdone this just to prove the point. We'll apply that, and then finally, since we may still over through here have a little bit of green left, we're going to use SCNR real quick just to undo some of the green in here. And very quickly you can start seeing that we've got a real colorful image with a lot of life, a lot of definition, and if we look at it here in full size, we can start seeing some of the reds and blues down here in M42. Now obviously we've got some noise reduction to do. Uh, in further processing, but this does kind of go to the point and go to show that uh, as as Pick said in the same thread, what you're seeing at halfway points through processing really isn't something to get that terribly concerned about. Do remember that the screen transfer function only shows you something on the screen. It doesn't actually impact the image itself until you apply some sort of stretch or some sort of algorithm to it. And there's there's almost always time to reach back in and, and overcome something that you may initially be worried about. Hope that this has been helpful for everybody, and we'll see you next time.